Okay, all right, so I'm going to talk about automatic updates, which is a part of a strategic initiative for Drupal core. Um, I've been part of a team working on the contrib module, and uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, it's ready to use. Um, and so that's sort of the big message from the difference between previous sessions. It's always been like alpha, beta, not ready to use. Um, it's stable in contrib. Um, I think we've had uh, this version of automatic updates. Is, we've had alphas since um, uh, June of last year. And I think it was stable in November. And we've had, I think, like one bug in a year followed, uh, filed by anybody else besides us. Um, we've never had a bug reported um, that ho somebody's site was hosed or that somebody <laughs> missed an update. So um, obviously, like, if you expect it to update your site, it's really security focused. Um, so we want to sort of give confidence that it's been working for people. Um, you know, we don't know that nobody's site's been hosed, but nobody's complained that they have. Um, I, I assume we would hear that. Um, and the last bug was, the last month was the first bug in like half a year, and it was like somebody had set their file path for their private files to a path that didn't exist, and it sort of stopped it from being updated. It didn't, didn't stop, didn't cause the update to get bad, but it sort of failed one of our... Uh, update readiness checks, uh, and we fix that now. So, um, yeah, I usually wouldn't like brag about, you know, our modules not having many bugs, but of course, like, I, I know there's a reticence to like, have, install something that's gonna update your code base when you aren't around, so. Um, I'm Ted Bowman, Principal Software Engineer at Aquia's Drupal Acceleration Team, uh, Tech Lead for Automatic Updates Initiative, uh, and lay up order and settings tray co-maintainer. And that's my dog, Gracie. She didn't really work on it much, but you know, moral support. Um, so it's basically to keep Drupal sites secure and make Composer as painless as possible. Um, and it's also part of, it's sort of the backbone of another module called Project Browser, which in, will install new modules on your site. Um, I know a bit about that if we want to, if you have questions about it later, but that's not really the focus of this talk. Um, so it's really for sites with, um, without the budget for really complicated update systems. Um, prefer to avoid the command line uh, and for technical people hosting Drupal sites. So if you're hosting a bunch of Drupal sites and you're, um, and you want to make that less painful for you. So I, I guess for like people who want it on their individual site, it's sort of geared towards the less technical setups. But if you are sort of technical and hosting a bunch of sites, then it could be useful for you. Um, and you know, basically anybody wants to apply security updates in a timely manner, there's, you know, when big security updates come out, Drupal sites generally don't get, or a lot of Drupal sites don't get updated right away. So. Um, it's yet less useful if you have a complicated deployment workflow with uh, continuous integration, and obviously if your every update needs a PR and a review, uh, it's less useful for you because it's intentionally meant to update when there are no reviews. Uh, so it's a uh, we have the automatic updates module, which now has a sub module called Pag Package Manager, which is sort of a Composer API module. And then another library uh, called Composer Stager, which runs your Composer operations somewhere else so they can be checked first. Uh, so right now it's for updating uh, core only, though we have a contrib module in, or an experimental module in there that it will update contrib, but it doesn't offer the unattended updates of contrib. Um, really the main reason why it's experimental is because updating contrib in a lot of ways is experimental. So we didn't really want to make it stable as a first run and have people say, hey, your site, my site was hosed because I updated con this contrib module through your module. And you know we're in a position where, well, was it our updater or is it the fact that you updated a contrib module that would have broken your site in any case? Um, most of the uh, experimental module that updates contrib, like almost all of the code is is running through the same system that updates core, so there's nothing really like special about it that makes it more dangerous than 
core except for updating modules is, is depending on the module maintainers is you know more or less stable um, but if you you know if you update contrib now and you don't have problems then using our modules should also not give you problems um, if you use a ton of modules and when you update your contrib modules it breaks your site um, because something happens in the update process then we're probably not going to solve that for you uh, if it's if it's a problem with the modules itself um, it can do background uh, updates and again it's it's built on top of package manager and package manager right now it's included in automatic updates it's going to be a separate module in Drupal core um, there's no user interface it creates these stages where you would run composer operations and um, yeah also is used by project browser um, so how the update works is we create a temporary copy of the code of your site uh, which we call a stage. We run the composer operations there. Um, when we run the composer operations in that stage, we check certain things like, hey, did, did this cause you to um, install any insecure modules or insecure dependencies? So basically, did it, you know, and did it have a side, did it have any side effects that we weren't expecting? Um, and then we apply the changes back to the site, and then we delete the stage. So there's lots of validation at every step. There's also an event system, so you can hook into it. One, to check in that stage, okay, did anything happen that I didn't want to happen? Or um, you can prevent the updates from happening. Say if you, if you have the attend, unattended cron updates running and you want to have special, up, special logic to not run updates under certain conditions, you can check when the uh, cron updater is running and say, oh no, some condition is not met, I actually don't want to do updates. Maybe you only want to do core updates at like 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. at night, your time. Uh, it's pretty easy to write code to do that. Uh, so we want to keep, you know, want to keep your site secure, make Composer easy, easy as possible. Um, and let me see here. So to get set up, you kind of have to, things have to be probably more valid than they have to be sort of regularly with Composer. I think a lot of Composer operations will work if you run Composer Validate and it tells you there's a bunch of problems. Um, hopefully, you know, your site's not, you know, you might not know that if you've never run Composer Validate, um, but we don't want to basically sort of be in a risky situation where Composer says, oh, things aren't really in a really great state. If, if Composer reports that things aren't in a great state, we're going to report that and tell you, you know, basically fix these problems that Composer um, knows about before we attempt to update your site. Um, you have to have Composer itself to be runnable on the system. So we don't, you know, we don't re-implement the Composer API. We actually call out to Composer. Um, now you also need rsync. Um, and technically right now, if you install the the module and you use Windows, you wouldn't need rsync, but that's going to change because uh, basically we re-implemented this syncing process outside of rsync for people who don't have rsync, and it sucked trying to do that. And so we're just going to rely on rsync. So what do you mean by composers using HTTPS and TLS? Like so you, know? you, you would only, that would only not be the case if you set it to not be the case. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. If you have some right. server set, like hot firewall or something crazy, yeah. 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 You would have to either <laughs> either inherited a project that that had that set up, or for some reason your server just doesn't support that. So that's this is more of a composer setting rather than like uh, something in the repository setting. Yeah, it's just a composer setting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. And we, I think we have documentation for how to <laughs> how to set that up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's dangerous to use Composer without that. That's why, that's why we don't support it. Um, and it, right now we don't support multi-sites, and that's really not on the horizon anytime soon. And a lot of that is because uh, we don't have a locking system that would lock across multiple sites, and we don't really want to support that because we don't really know if you have a... We basically stop a lot of operations while we're doing the update. Um, so we'll see. And we haven't actually had any complaints that people want to do on a multi-site. So, but 
Yeah, it's it's really easy to turn it off. Uh, that basically all our validators are in individual services. You could turn that off and you could run it on multi-site, but then it would be up to you to make sure that you're not updating one site while an operation is going on in another site. For instance, you could be updating core and then installing a module on another site, and that would probably be very bad. Okay, yeah. Is the state the um, stager? Is all that's doing is changing what it's including, kind of? Like where uh, it's including a lot of the vendor from a different directory, is that? No, no, it's your whole it's your whole code base. Well, your whole code base. Or, is, or right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. It's but it's it's somewhere else, and then it's including it. So and there's some logic that says no, no, this one copying, that one. It's copying it back over. We we thought about doing the sort of like di divert it, you know, basically make a copy and then switch to that later, but. It was sort of deemed for trying to get into core that that was not going to happen as far as like changing the base index.php for, for core. Right. Yep. Hey, you said this. Do you run database updates? Uh, we do, yeah. Uh, though we don't run them on the unattended updates. And if we find one, that's one of the things we check is was there an unattended update? But right now we only support unattended updates for um, patch releases. So if core supports two patch releases at a time, you could potentially have a year of unattended updates and then you go to the form and you say, I want to go to the next mine or whatever. Um, the idea with that is database updates can break your site. So we don't, right. oh, that's that's yeah, we don't really um, want to do that. I, here's, I have another question. Yeah. You said there's an event dispatch system that you can yeah. get to. Does that event dispatch system bootstrap Drupal? Um, yes, but not in the stage itself. Good. So I could, for instance, create a hook that exported configuration diffs after the update was done. E, e, after the up, update you was applied apply to the site? The update and yeah. Export the diff. Yeah, you could do whatever at that point, yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's just, I mean, technically you could bootstrap Drupal in that other site. It's just a matter of you would have to either point to the same database or you'd have to copy to that database. But then once you bootstrap Drupal, in a new version of Drupal core, you possibly could be screwed if you don't want to do the update, that your database could already be in a state where, well, you can't really go back to the previous version of core. Uh, sorry, I have another question. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is there theoretically some downtime during the rsync operation? Yes. Okay. And we put the site in maintenance mode, and we highly suggest that you don't take it out of that, and probably during in the process of getting into core, it may be mandatory because it is, yeah, bad things could happen if you um, if you try to hit the site where you have different versions of different uh, modules. I mean, it's very short time, potentially, especially with patch updates because during a patch update, there's probably not gonna be that many files that have changed. Um, during a minor update, obviously, there could be tons more sites that have, tons more files that have changed, but Actually, there could be tons of files changed in any case, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What qualifies uh, as a supported Composer plugin? Is that just a whitelist? Uh, yeah, right now it's a whitelist. You can add settings to add your own whitelist. The problem is that Composer plugins, there is no API to say this Composer plugin only affects one package. Like Composer packages, for example, you could include a patch that patches any library in general. So we we allow Composer patches, because that's one of the ones that we allow, but the functionality that plugins has, it basically, there's no limit to it. So we, we don't, we basically can't validate it because Composer doesn't tell us anything about what that does. So you just kind of have to trust. And also the thing is that we don't copy your whole site over because we don't copy the files and other certain directories. So there's no, guarantee that a Composer plugin won't touch those other directories that we haven't copied back over. So it could affect directories in a stage thinking they're the live ones because Composer has an idea of this different stage. So if you know, basically, usually most Composer plugins can be fine. If you use one, we say, hey, we don't support this. Um, we probably need better documentation about why we don't support particular plugins and like what you should check for. Um, but most Composer plugins aren't going to do these dangerous things. We just don't know on a random plugin if they are going to do dangerous things. So if, if there is any security patch, do we 
Are you recommending that we'll not use composer update or uh, just composer update command? Or? Uh, if there's a security update for Drupal core itself, yeah. Um, then yeah, the patch releases will will cover that. So, do we can we use that then composer update to command? Yeah, I mean you can use it directly on the terminal if you want to, but that but then you wouldn't need this module. Yeah. Uh, Does it alter the lock file? Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It yeah. basically runs composer update for you. Yeah. Right? It runs compose it yeah, it just runs composer commands. It doesn't do anything like so the other important thing that I don't think covered in the slide, it's basically you can run <clears throat> automatic updates on your site and then decide, well I don't want to use it and then just take it out. And then, you know, Composer doesn't know that you, it just is valid Composer operation, so you don't have to use it forever, or you can, you know, you can start without automatic updates and then start to use it. So it doesn't leave you in a state to where, oh, you used automatic updates, you have to continue to use automatic updates. Any other questions? Is, is, there, is there an easy place to find the list of supported plugins? Uh, is it documented or is it just in, in the code somewhere? It's right now in the code. It's really only like five. It's really like Drupal cores, composer plugins, and then composer patches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we, you know, I think in the error, you, we actually have a link to say, you know, you can ask for this to be supported. Um, and the problem is that to support it really means that anything that we consider to be dangerous it's not doing and it will never do. And that, then you have to talk to the maintainer of the module or the library to say, hey, I want to use it in this kind of system or you're never going to do this kind of functionality. I mean, it could also be one of those buyer beware things. Like if you want to specifically allow automatic updates to use a specific plugin, then you can yeah. configure your site to do that. Within. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is now. There's a whitelist you can put in. Yeah. An allow list. Yeah. Yeah. So, so right now, the, the web UI, to do that works? As long as like the server can update it? A web UI to allow... To run the update? Uh, is there a web UI to do that? Yeah. To do automatic updates? Yeah. The whole thing? Yeah. That's what it does? Right. Yeah. So as long as the server, the web server can write, to do the back, like it, it works now? Just yeah. Through the web, through yeah. the Drupal backend? Yeah. So I'll, there's, a, there's a little bit about, you don't, there's another way to do it. Um, so this is just like showing you the UI is going to show you some problems, and this one, um, there's a problem with, and I think maybe we fixed this, so the file system's not writable. We support um, symbolic links, but we don't support symbolic, we don't support links that go outside of your project, um, because if they go outside of your project route and we update, and you then, um, you know, then you don't want to do the update, you've already changed that code that or whatever it is outside of your project. So we can't roll that back. Um, and I think this is just another example of, uh, yeah. So is that where it puts the site? In site slash? Um, what is that? Active no. directory at? What is an active directory? Oh, is that just being the current Drupal sites folder? Yeah, it has, yeah, okay. has like, I is guess that, that just happens to be where. Oh, it does put it in there. I see. So the sites, the vendor folder is in there. The first one is in sites slash desktop folder slash vendor. Yeah. So it is using kind of. This is the active site. This is the not the stage site. This is right. like beforehand we check a bunch of things, then we check a bunch of things in the stage. And if you have links that go out of your active site to some random location we don't know about, then you you can't reuse the updater. Oh, it's just telling you the link. Yeah. yeah. In so, other words, you're not going to let the site break itself. Yeah. We're not going to let the site update things that aren't the site, which maybe people are fine with if they know what it's, but we don't know what it is, so we can't really support it. Uh, so this is attended updates. There's just a, uh, a button. It shows you the current miner and then the next miner. I think we show any core supported miners in the future. Usually there's at the maximum of three. Uh, so showing you the uh, you know two miners on the head means if you were on 10 zero and 10 twos out, then you could actually wait till 10 two is out 
to update there to 10.2 and skip one minor. Um, you download the updates and then it tells you like, hey, hey. why? Nope, update broke. I don't know why. Yeah, I was seeing something different over there. Uh, yeah, so basically says, hey, you're right, ready to update 10.9. Uh, we strongly recommend you use maintenance mode. It continue to go forward, um, and then hey, yay! What? <laughs> I don't know why this is like. Oh. Is this supposed to be animated? <laughs> I guess so. It's not animated over here. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's your status is complete. You're updated. Um, if you are doing it in an intended way through the form, then it'll say, hey, there's database updates that will be updated during this process. Um, if but that, it'll tell you that before it applies the update. So if you think, oh, right now is not a good time to run the database updates, I didn't know there was going to be database updates with this patch update, or minor updates will almost always have one, then you can sort of back out and wait till a good time. Um, unattended updates are for only, or for patch releases. You can either set it for just security releases or all patch releases. Um, we'll email you if there's problems detected, meaning like we can't apply this update in this case, maybe because it has database updates or we find some other problem. Uh, it can be run via a terminal command or web request. The benefit of running it through the console is it's more secure. So basically you can have set up a cron job, run by a user who has right access to your um, sites folder or to your Drupal code, and but the web server doesn't necessarily have to have right access. And then committed. What's that? And then commit it. Well, it doesn't, we don't. If do you it. write a cron job, what I'm saying is you're going to add that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's going to change your composer lock file, so yeah. you're going to want to do something with that. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> this. So if you script it, you know, is what I mean. Yeah. So this, or you could use the event system to do it if you want to module to it or whatever. Um, so we have a, our own Symphony console command that no longer relies on Drush. Um, and then you would just, however often you want it to run. It doesn't run cron. So it's a very um, lightweight sort of uh, job. If you, you can, so you can do it pretty frequently. It'll just ask Drupal.org, is there a new update? And then it checks. Would you recommend that to be in the the approach for someone that, that is site locally on their machine, because that's basically a standard approach to run composer updates the right way, basically, even on the local machine. You mean if you're updating like on a local dev? Yeah. I mean, I guess usually your site's right on your local machine, like if you're just developing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter as much using. Sometimes there's a lot of explanation to deliver within a dev team so that yeah. everyone does the composer yeah. update the right way. So yeah. if there's like a one stop shop to kind of. Yeah, you, right you could, yeah, you could do it that way. Though, I mean, usually if you if you're developing, then you probably are more picky about like which version you're going to. Yeah. yeah. If, if it breaks in the batch, it's like a weird error, but if you're in the command line, so I need developers. I mean, it doesn't that. get you that much besides. I mean, it does. Yeah. If you were sitting at the terminal and you were there, then this doesn't get you that much. The the mm -hmm. benefit is if you're not wanting to be there to, to run it. So. But it does the, the sorry the database hub too. Though. No, not this because it, unattended updates right now don't do database updates because I mean it'd be easy if somebody right module do that, but we don't. We basically don't want. Well, again, that, yeah, yeah, that's just another line in your script. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but we will stop if we do a tech database update. You would have to remove that validation. Oh. Yeah, we don't run updates in the background that require database updates because you have to run database updates if they were required. You can't just be like, oh, we're just not going to run them and then run the site because that could break your site. Sometimes you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't check. Sometimes it's not running them. Just to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, that's so we basically, that's one of the benefits of having it in a staged composer area. We can check your active and stage and say, were there new database updates introduced? If there were, then we, we email you and say, hey, we can't perform this update right now. Please go to the forum and do it yourself. Oh, I see. So. But patch updates try not to do database updates. They try to make database updates for core only happen in minor releases. Yeah. That's always, can't always happen, but that's the goal. Yeah. But if you wanted to, you can set that flag and let it well, run the updates. We don't have like a configuration flag. But really, it won't. You would have fail, to make a module. I mean, you can make that script not fail if there is a 
can't. No, you can't. Never mind. John, you can write. You can write a no, mod. You can write a very I simple. Understand. You can write a very simple module to re remove our validation. Say I don't care. I'm going to run stuff even as database updates. But. That is not in the roadmap for our modules. That's, That's not transparent. No, no, I know that. Yeah, yeah. But in the CLI, I would think there's just like a... No. Just, just okay. It's dangerous to do it if nobody's around. You can't, you can't run updates and then not run the database updates, so... Yeah. Yeah. Is that, I assume is there, uh, when the update runs and there is an update that's okay. applied and everything's cool, there's like an email that goes out? Like yeah. There's an email if... It gets updated and there's an email if we start an update and say, oh, we can't finish this because of X, Y, or Z problem. Yeah. Sure. Or even if we can't start one for some reason. Yeah. So I'm just, yeah. <laughs> someone, someone said, that's probably the most questions yeah. that anyone's yeah. ever had. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious about basically whether you're running the post the right way. Yeah. So I assume it's with no dev dependencies and with an optimized autoloader and with all recursive dependencies for what you're updating? Yes, it'll bring in the dependencies for up your updating, yeah. And the other two things? <laughs> <laughs> I would have I mean, to check on just, the actual commands. Okay, I'm trying to... Are you looking at the actual I'm command? looking for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll ask you later. Yeah, yeah. I mean... GitLab has search. You can search code in GitLab. Yeah. Search yeah. for updating. You know what? I, I yeah. didn't try that. Yeah. And we can change it. I mean, nobody's complained how we're doing it, but we could do it better, I'm sure. Um, so you can also update via the web. It now it used to not work with automated cron. Now it works with automated cron. Um, and actually, how it works via the web is is actually it, it starts a process that runs the other script. So um, we did that because of timeouts. Basically, um, we don't want the update to be restricted to the timeout um, that you might have via the web. Um, so. Yeah, so and also there's sort of only one code path for updating a site is part of the reason we do that too. Um, so you can use, you know, hit system cron or you can hit use automated cron, but you do need web server access, um, web server write access. Um, so that's obviously not the, the recommended way to run Drupal sites. So the recommended way would be to use that terminal command. But, you know, a lot of people probably don't have their don't have this right protected and aren't running updates. So if you could fix one of those problems, you're in a better place than you would be if you were fixing none of them. Um, so file permissions can be unpredictable. Uh, you know, they're obviously, we can't say we're never going to have a failure in an update. Um, we have a, um, so basically if things go wrong before the apply state, we'll email you and say, hey, you know, we figured out something went wrong. If it went wrong during the apply state, which again, nobody's ever complained that it has, but theoretically it could happen, um, then you, know, you should have backed up, and we told you we told you should have backed up. But also, we have a sort of like a failure marker that we write before we do the apply stage. So we should never at least be in a position to where we failed and we didn't know we failed. So basically, if we fail to, to complete the update and delete that marker file, then uh, we'll know that marker file is there and we'll say, sorry, you know, something went terribly wrong. You should restore from backup. So, um, so for update yeah. in this case, you're talking about database updates too? What's that? <laughs> no, saying, it, no, we can't roll back the database update. Right, but well, that's yeah. what I mean. But in this, when you're talking about things go wrong, this is just the poser file switch, right? Well. This is, if, if you're running through the form, the form where we say, you know, yeah. update, you click the button, then yes, we'll run. That does everything. Yeah, that will send you a next button instead of run the database updates. You know, it'll prompt you to do it. Uh, we can't roll back database updates. Drupal doesn't have well, sure, sure. Yeah, a mechanism for that. So, yeah, so basically. But I, I guess what I mean yeah. is if the auto update part wouldn't yeah. finish because it would notice the update. So it wouldn't continue anyway. So yeah, it wouldn't. Have, yeah, that wouldn't. So this one is only talking about yeah. the kind of the, the full auto update, not just the code. No, no. There's always a possibility when you're copying the code over, somebody can okay, unplug right. the server, right? I mean, it's always. Well, thought, right. Yeah, yeah. And so we check to make sure, like, so if if you ran an unattended update, it was just a patch update, nothing should have gone wrong, and then a week later, your first visitor comes and hits the site. 
or the admin say logs in. Oh, who knows? Maybe your, maybe your site sucks. <laughs> then, uh, you know, if when the admin logs in, we're going to say, oh, we just noticed that we tried to update and we never finished. You should restore them back up. I mean, if theoretically we have tests that for that to work, it's never come up, but we want to be prepared for that situation. What does this do to tell us something got, went wrong? Is it just the script completed properly? No, there's a file that we put at the beginning of the update and then we delete at the end of the update. If the file does not get deleted, then we consider your site's host. I mean, it could be one file missed, right? But So that could be at, during the composer install, and then composer well no it's only the file copying over we don't do the the composer operations happen in the stage so if that gets hosed then we don't try to apply the sites the only really critical part is when we copy the code back over which is not a copper not a composer okay, operation so yeah. stager if once the updates start it'll, you're never going to want to revert that basically yeah okay yeah so it's not okay uh, okay <laughs> So yeah, basically, um, we check a lot of things. Um, intended updates are easy, two clicks. Intended updates can be done via the terminal or via web. Your site's safe um, and if something happens during the update, except at the very last when we're running our sync and saying, pull this code back over. If something goes wrong there, then you're kind of hosed and you have to restore from backup. Just to be clear, nobody's ever reported that this has happened, so I'm just saying, like, theoretically, it's possible. I mean, our sync is pretty stable software. Um, okay, so what we don't do is we don't do rollbacks. Um, so we don't consider, like, we updated to the stage, we didn't apply the update, we don't consider that a rollback. We consider that we started an update, we found out something was wrong, and we didn't apply it to your site. So that's not really a rollback. What I'm talking about with rollbacks is you update it to the next version of Drupal core and you're like, well, I like the previous version better. And that's sort of on you at that point. Um, we don't handle Git-based uh, workflows. Custom code could do it. We don't do like A-B testing where you're going to update and you want to check out one version of core versus the other. Um, and it's not on the roadmap to support uh, core upgrades, uh, core major upgrades, like from 10 to 11. Um, so it doesn't update contrib projects. Uh, it's not part of the core MVP. It's mostly because backwards compatibility can be iffy in contrib. Um, we do have a module, automatic updates extension, which comes with it, and you know, it just basically that just provides a form, um, which is very similar. There is a form in Drupal core that will update your contrib, but it doesn't actually use Composer. This this does use Composer, um, so. Um, I think a lot of people are using this, is my impression. Um, it's mostly experimental because we need to sort of figure out how we sort of wanted to use it, people to use it as an experimental module first before we make it stable in Contrib. Um, but I think we'll probably think about making it stable because we've also never really had a bug on the experimental version in a long time. Um, the road to core. Um, there needs to be some, the update framework, which is a sort of extra layer of protection against supply side attacks um, that the Drupal Association is working on. And we, we need to get that done first before we're committed to core, at least for beta. Alpha, we maybe will get into alpha without that, but usually alpha can trim module, alpha experimental core modules are not part of releases. I guess there's a debate about whether automatic updates will be an exception to that rule, um, but it will be at that point. Even if it is included, I would hope there would be an extra warning because it is alpha, it's not a, a beta level. Um, so there's been a security review for uh, the TUF on Drupal.org, the TUF implementation, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's been a security review of the Drupal module and then we're sort of at the phrase of like a core committee review for Drupal core. Um, and the best, so the best way to help right now is to use it. Um, we actually have a 302 as of today, I think. And um, yeah, we want people to use it. We want people to, uh, you know, give us uh, 
things we could do better, let us know if it is actually working for you. Um, it, also testing the experimental module would be great um, to see if that works well. And then I think questions, more questions. Oh, we have Slack me. There's an auto updates channel. You can ping me at uh, Tedbo there. We have Tuesday meetings at 12 Eastern Standard Time. I think that's every other week. A, it's in the, um, if you go to the Slack channel, I think it's up on the top there. Um, anything else? They're every week a lot. Every week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of uh, yeah, and so there's also Project Browser, which I, I have not seen the latest status of it, but um, basically it's a way to install new modules and it uses it will use Composer backend. Um, it's also a contrib module that's slated for core. Um, that's mostly it. Any has anybody used the module? I know some I people it. I what's that? required it. Yeah. I know people I are using it. We have about I think 400 or so people using it in Contrib, and um, we, yeah, haven't got reports of it not working. Um, so that is, is we're, we're sort of want people to try it out and want people to um, use it. You know, if you, it obviously has the limitation of not working on a lot of sort of major Drupal hosting because the, it needs to be writable. Um, so, but it can, you know, if you do hosting yourself, if, say if you're an agency, it can be made to work, especially if you want to run the term, if you want to set up the terminal command, then potentially you don't have to change how your hosting is done. If you now write protect your, um, the, the, the sites from the web server user, um, and setting up the, the terminal command on even cheap hosting is not, super hard if you run any, any sort of like um, web hosting. The only thing is like don't run, don't set up the terminal command as root if you can avoid that. Just generally you don't want to run the stuff like that as root. Anything else? Yep. How do you see that articulated with like a typical Git flow because we're yeah. updating the code and yeah. we want that to be committed. So is that yeah. going to be seen mostly as an easy to use? I mean, is it easy to use a payload for like more uh, like I, simple deployment model, or do you see that being more integrated with like more advanced workflow? Yeah, I would say either um, either you set it to only do security updates, <clears throat> so that you want it to update and you know you're going to. Basically, you know you're, you're, that's not going to be the ultimate update. You're going to run it locally when you come in on Monday or whatever, and you're going to update locally and push, you know, and basically wipe out the update that happened before. Um, so that would be one way if you use, you know, if you use Git, but you're okay with your it being out of sync temporarily because you don't want to wait for the, you know, a security release is going to happen on Wednesday, say. So if you're doing it that way. You know, you could set up for only security releases, just so you know if your security release comes out for core, then it's updated. You're temporarily out of sync with your Git workflow, but then you update to the same one, you know. So it doesn't really, in that case, maybe save you work. It saves your site from being insecure for however long. And depending on the nature of the core security update, you know, it would be very bad to have it not be secure for a short period of time. Um, either that or, if you know, if you, if you do use a Git workflow, then potentially you could either write a custom module or um, or write a script that would run, say, after, um, or would trigger our script and say, okay, run it. And if it came back, if it updated, then you know apply, then then get commit. Um, or you could write a custom module that you know you could actually execute Git however you want after after the update. So the way to go is to. Provide a custom module that hook into the yeah. life cycle of that. Yeah, so you could either do it through a custom module or you could do it through a custom script. Like a script would be way easier. We, yeah. We've done it a bunch of times on customer projects yeah. where GitHub and GitLab have CLI binaries you can use. And so you can just write a script that's like git add, git yeah. commit. Well, actually, sorry. Drush config export first yeah. and then add and commit. 
and then you can push and um, just run like a create merge request command, and it is, yeah. then someone can just review it and merge it, and you're done. Yeah, yeah. So you could do it in a CI workflow where you just run the script, and if it changes, then you push it out to production or whatever. It's going to say it's kind of like a dependent bot replacement. Yeah, you can it is. Run like an update environment that just does it, and it only yeah. commits it if there's a change. Yeah. And then that would kick off a full CI cycle. Yeah. Because you mean, you know, what you have to, most places they really you really want to do CI cycle and yeah. like do a full yeah. kind of test, but yeah. um, it's a little yeah, it's like a lot of overlap kind of with, yeah. with CI stuff. Yeah. So it's a little So it is like yeah, if you have a but yeah, composer it, updates you have to yeah, sorry. But. If you have an advanced CI workflow then this yeah, is not necessarily you know, but set, but setting that, up that process itself. I mean, I'm not doing automatic composer updates. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like dependent yeah. bots only on GitHub. Yeah. I think so. This could be really yeah. useful, actually. Yeah. I think as yeah. like a generic tool yeah. to do that. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? All right. Well, cool. Thanks. Thank you.